Welcome everyone to the inaugural episode of the Hutch and Huber podcast. Um, I'm I'm Hutch. I'm Huber. I'm Bryce Hutchins. He's Sterling Huber. Um, should be fun. This is the first podcast we're doing. We already have a website, but this is the first podcast that we're doing. Kind of going to add a whole new dynamic to the the whole Hutch and Huber website and the whole thing. So uh, it should be fun today. Um, I'm excited to get this started. Yeah, it's something that we've been wanting to do for a while, and uh, it's just kind of a whole new element to our website and something for you guys to see us do now. Yeah, so um, uh, just to give you a little background on us, uh, we're both going to be juniors next year at Providence High School in Indiana, the best high school in the country, in case you were wondering. So, uh, you know, uh, let's see, let's let's get into it. Let's get into, into some topics. Let's discuss. It's, this podcast is going to be mostly about sports. Uh, maybe throw some other some fun, goofy stuff in there, but it's going to be mostly about sports. So uh, let's get it started. All right. So first topic of the night today is a uh, game one of the NBA Finals, part four, the Warriors Cavs rematch, and uh, we're just going to kind of break it down a little bit. I wouldn't so. say break it down. I mean, we're I'm no <laughs> basketball expert speaking for myself, but we're recording during the game tonight. So uh, you know, my my basic take on this series is that there's no way it's going more than five games it might be a sweep uh, I would say that LeBron would pro- was probably he's going to get 50 in one game and uh, and the Cavs will win one game but I think it's a five game series maybe a four game series where Warriors are going to win this one pretty easily yeah really there's no breakdown because we all know the Warriors are going to win it's just a matter <laughs> of how many, how many games it's going to take <laughs> that's true and I don't see it being very many um Already in the first half, uh, J.R. Smith's taken out, uh, went, undertook Clay Thompson. I, I don't like J.R. Smith, man. He, <laughs> I'm a Celtics fan, if, if you guys don't know. And he pushed Horford straight in the back in that series. Uh, J.R. Smith, man, he's is he becoming a dirty player? I, I don't know. I mean, he's got a history of being a dirty player. I mean, I, I still remember the time uh, someone was shooting free throws and he untied the dude's <laughs> shoes. Was he playing for the Knicks back then? <laughs> Uh, All right, so one thing about Ty Lue I wanted to say that uh, he had a quote earlier this week, and he's talking about the Cavs and their chances, and uh, he said, don't count us out. It's not over till it's over, and the finals haven't even started yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would venture to say that uh, just based on that comment, it almost is over. <laughs> I mean, they, they, it almost feels like they, it's almost like they don't believe themselves that they have a chance, like... They're just acknowledging that the series. I mean, I don't see the Cavs. I don't see how the Cavs can win this series. LeBron's gonna get us forty points on a triple double every night, but it's it's not even gonna be close to enough to defeat this Warriors team. I mean, it's it's amazing. The Warriors, as much as you know, I'm I'm not a fan of the Warriors. I, I mentioned earlier that I'm a Celtics fan. You know, I I don't like the Warriors. I don't, I'm not a LeBron fan either. You know. Him, you know, it's tough being a Celtics fan. LeBron went in the East, you know, eight years in a row, whatever it is. But the Warriors is really impressive, man. I mean, they're they're fun to watch. These guys, you got, you know, Steph Curry. I think he's the best shooter of all time. And Kevin Durant. And there's not, I've never seen anything like him before. He's a seven footer that can handle the basketball and shoot. It's, it's in insane. my opinion, I think he's the best scorer of all time, if not second. The to best Kobe. scorer of all time. Best second scorer. to Kobe. Where, where's, where's, I've never seen him play, but where is his airness, Michael Jordan, on your list? I think just, like, if you're playing Behind one-on-one, Kobe? KD is seven feet tall, and he can, he can shoot and dribble the wall. Okay, well, you're saying one-on-one now. Maybe that's different. One-on-one's different than pure score in the NBA, in an NBA basketball game, five-on-five. Five. I mean, I think if you want one-on-one, I would say, uh, I would go KD, Kobe, and then Jordan third. I don't, I don't mind that, actually. I think Michael Jordan would beat Kobe in a game of one-on-one, but I, I don't mind. KD, he is maybe the ultimate one-on-one player as far as scoring goes. Anyways, uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't want to spend too much time on this finals. I, it's kind of boring. I mean, the, the Warriors, they're going to win in four or five you know, games. Honestly, the Warriors shouldn't, shouldn't have even lost two years ago. They were up 3-1. Draymond got suspended. Kind of changed the whole momentum and the dynamic of the series, and Cavs came back and won three yeah. in a row. That's true. If if maybe if Draymond doesn't get suspended and the Cavs don't come back from three one and win that series, that that seems like is the NBA. What's it like today? Are the you know the Warriors? Are they 
they're going for four in a row. I, I don't know. That's that's a that's a road we probably don't want to go down. But uh, you know, that's after. Okay, we've done one topic. Um, we forgot to give a shout out to our man Nathan Pop. He's he's the behind the scenes guy. You know, he's been helping us a lot to kickstart this podcast, and do, he's done some things with the website for us. So I'd like to give him a shout out real quick. Also, uh, me and me and Huber, we both play baseball and basketball at Providence High School, but you guys don't care about that. Nobody cares about that. We're not very good. So we're here to talk about we're here to talk about college and pro sports. So uh, and one more thing to add about that, LeBron. If you can already tell, I, I hate LeBron. I don't like him at all. I'm a huge Pacers fan. Pace, I'm still salty about the Pacers should have won <laughs> in the uh, conference semis this year. He they mentions called- it just about every day. The Oladipo, that was a goaltending. Should have won the series. But anyway, LeBron, in my opinion, should only have one finals. Maybe two. Because when he beat the Spurs, he missed the three, and Ray Allen got the rebound and made the three in the corner, if you don't recall. I recall. <laughs> Is that 2012? 2011? Because mm, 2011, two. they beat the Mavericks. Or right. they lost the Mavericks. Right. But maybe that was the one they should have had. Yeah. That's true. Anyways... I'm not a huge NBA guy. I, I like I like college more, although I, I do like the NBA. Speaking of college basketball, Huber is a big IU fan. What tell him about the event you were at last night? And, uh, if you have any thoughts on that, well, uh, Huber's a winery. They have this annual event every year where they bring in the uh, head football coach uh, Tom Allen and the uh, head basketball coach Archie Miller, and they kind of talk about how the past season went and uh, their expectations for the upcoming season and. You know, I just kind of got a vibe from the whole uh, the whole room that just everyone is so excited about IU basketball this season and so much more excited than recent seasons because obviously because of the signing of Romeo Langford. And I think even Hutch could agree with that. Oh, I'm, I got to tell you, I'm almost <laughs> excited about Indiana basketball because I'm tired of Indiana fans around here being down. You know, it used to be there was everybody around here was, you know, from – from October through early April, it was college basketball fever around here. And it was just, you know, Indiana fans, even though it was completely irrational, you know, they'd come at me, the Kentucky fan, every day, you know, with with some kind of argument that Indiana, that Indiana is somehow a better program than it I, Anyways, but the last few years, to be honest with you, it hasn't been as fun as a Kentucky basketball fan in Indiana. I'm ready to get that excitement back. Yeah, you know, honestly, it, it hurts me to say this, but every time I get into an argument with someone about Indiana and Kentucky basketball, you know, I always, like, I have to bring up the Watford shot. And, that's right. And, and that's, that's one of the only things I can That's the stupidest talk argument. About. That's for another day. That's that's the stupidest argument, maybe of all time. But uh, also, I'll throw a quick jab in there at IU basketball. You said that they, they like to talk about how the past year went. Well, well, what did Archie Miller say about the past year? Well, not very good. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> well, we did better than the years before that. Well, it's, yeah, that's saying a whole lot. Anyways, uh, so a- anything else from uh, you'd like to say about Indiana basketball next year? Maybe mm-hmm. something about you know the banquet or whatever you were at last night. Well, I think just that the freshmen are to play a big role, and also Jawan Morgan coming back was a huge, huge piece for IU to get back. He'll be if. If not the best player, him and Romeo will be the two best players next year. And I, uh, NBA scout said Jawan Morgan will be a man, a, a man among boys next year. And uh, last year he played really well in Big Ten conference play. And uh, I expect them to maybe win Big Ten Player of the Year this year. That's that's a bold statement. I I don't, to be honest with you, know that much about Indiana this upcoming season. What they're going to be like. The only thing, the only thing that I know. Is that they're going to be really young? You know, I'm a Kentucky fan, so I know a little about that. It can be frustrating at the start of the year, but uh, overall, I got I'm excited. I'm excited that Indiana is uh, hopefully becoming at least a, a better program now. Uh, you know, let me just say something about Kentucky. They're just going to have a bunch of freshmen again, and then they're going to they're going to lose in about the that's not sweets true. the Sweet Sixteen or the, maybe the round of Thirty Two. That's hilarious. Kentucky's going to be great next year. We're rolling straight into Kentucky basketball right here. This is our next topic. Kentucky, that's not true. Yesterday was decision day. Yeah, the guys had to, dis- to decide if they were going to stay in the NBA draft or come back to college. P.J. Washington, 
He's a sophomore. And he's going to be a sophomore next year. He decides he's going to come back to Kentucky. That's that's huge. But he's going to no provide way. some leadership. He's going to be one of the best players on the team next year. There's no way anyone's going to be able to compete with Duke next year. I don't know how you can argue Kentucky? against that. I'm t- clearly, there's there's never been a year in college basketball where no one can compete with anyone in a long time. We thought maybe that was the case with the Kentucky 38 and one team, but that you know there's the one, so that, that proves crazy. that proves wrong. There, you can't say that no one's going to be able to compete. On scale, of 30 Kentucky's going to be right there. Are you? <laughs> that doesn't even what did Indiana go like that year? Like 19 and 14? I don't know. Anyways, I'll take 38 and one over that any day. That was a fun year. But so the other thing you were talking about, you say we're just going to be a bunch of freshmen. Well, we're going to have PJ. He's going to be a sophomore. Looks like we've got a good shot to get this grad transfer. Whoa, one sophomore. <laughs> Looks like we've got a good shot to get this grad transfer from Stanford. He's going to be a senior. He was he was almost 20 and 10 last year, like 19 and a half, 9 and a half. And he's going to hopefully provide some leadership if we get him. It seems like it's it's down to us, Villanova, and maybe Duke for that guy, Reed Travis. i, I got to tell you, I'm on the Reed Travis hype train. I really hope we can, Kentucky can get Reed Travis next year. If Kentucky can get Reed Travis after getting P.J. back, Kentucky is legitimately 10 deep next year, two deep at every position. That's going to be huge. Mm, Practices are going to be wars. It doesn't matter. They're good players. I don't care. To a certain extent, I don't care how old they are. They're good players. we got talent. I'll take talent every day. I'll take talent over experience uh, every day of the week. Would you be in favor of uh, uh, players allowed to go to high school, go to the draft at high school? Well, See, the thing with me, it's not even as much of a Kentucky fan. It's just more of a college basketball fan. The thing that I do not want is for the NBA to make a D-League system like MLB's minor leagues, where the D-League kids get paid more than $30,000 a year. Maybe they're getting real salaries in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and that becomes a real option for them over college. I don't want that because if you have 60 kids going out of high school to the NBA slash D-League every year, that's that's going to diminish college basketball. It's not going to be as good basketball. It's not going to be as fun to watch. So that's what I don't want. I do think you know, I, probably that there should be a select group of kids that can go to the NBA every year. I'm just not sure the kind of system. I'm not sure how you do that. I think one of the – I have an idea. Maybe, you know, if, if guys are allowed to go to high school, you can only draft high school guys in the lottery or in the first round. So maybe guys who aren't as good out of high school don't go. I like, like that idea. Round. I've never heard that before. I like that idea. The only thing with that, there's actually See, like Ben Simmons. I like that idea. Ben a lot. Simmons would coming out of LSU probably wasted a year right. of his basketball career. Oh, he LSU. definitely did. With Johnny Jones as the coach, probably got worse. <laughs> That's terrible. Like he doesn't need to be going to class and everything. He needs to. I mean, he's gonna he's be one of the greatest player. players in the NBA. He's a basketball player. Like yeah. he needed to go out of high school. Like so, Same. maybe you could take the select group that should come out of high school and are ready to. And only draft them in the lottery, so you don't get guys who are kind of on the border drafting them in the second round. I love that idea. Actually, I, I really like that idea. So, um, you know, like what I was saying about Kentucky, I'm so excited for next year. I haven't, Kentucky hasn't had, I'm, I think this is probably, I, I'm going to go on record right now and say this is going to be our best team since the 38 and 1 year, 14 15. <laughs> this team is too deep at every position. You're laughing, but practices are going to be wars. You're gonna have so you're two, saying they're going to go 38 and 1. That's not what I'm saying. I'm <laughs> saying they're going to be really good. But if we play a really tough schedule this year. You got Duke, Kansas, Carolina, well, hey, and Louisville. I used to play Duke this year, too. That's, by the way, the Kentucky Duke game, first game of the season in November. That's going to be fun. I cannot wait for that. I think it's November 8th or 9th. Is that their first game of the year? First game of the year. They're going to go on one. That's it's going to be that's going to be one of the, it's going to be in Indianapolis. That's going to be one of the most fun games. I hope I've seen in a few years. That's that's gonna be a lot of talent on that floor. It's gonna be fun to watch. I really want to see Zion in college. I'm really interested to see that because uh, you know when he where he played high school, he played kind of at a small high school, kind of like Providence a little bit. He didn't play that much of uh, that great of competition. So I want, really want to see how he fares in in a high high school level. And yeah, to be honest with you, I don't know that much about any recruits that aren't coming to Kentucky but from what it seems to me like I'm not sh- I everybody's gonna be really excited about Zion Williamson you know Drake's wearing his jersey and all this stuff I think he's he's definitely hyped like he's he 
people hype him up to be better than he actually is. But yeah. he still is a very good player. I mean, what is he like six six? And you know, I'm not sure how much his game is. I don't think he's that great of a shooter. I'm not sure how much no. his his game is going to play at the college level. I mean, he's crazy athletic. He's going to be he's going to be a good player. But I feel like R.J. Barrett and Cameron Reddish, from what I've heard, the other two guys that are going to Duke are going to be better players than him. Yeah. Also, by R. J. the way, Barrett's, I thought is R.J. Barrett number one player in the class? I think so. From what I've heard, by the way, I'm a I'm a big follower of Kentucky Sports Radio. Matt Jones, I love it. You guys got to go check it out. These guys hate him. They're, they're just haters. He's he's. Anyways, from what I've heard, from what he said in his radio show, from what he's heard Don from Fisher. the Kentucky guys. Go listen to I don't him. even know who that is. But anyways, oh my God. he's like, it seems like... Uh, That's like saying I don't know who Matt Jones is. It seems it seems like, from what I've heard, when Zion Williamson picked Duke, that motivated Cal, and he's been on a tear since. He's been on a tear, and, and I love it. That's going to be another element to this Kentucky-Duke game early in, the, early, early in the year, the first game of the season. It's it's gonna be Coach Cal versus Coach K. They're going at each other. I mean, maybe Zion didn't fit different. as well at Kentucky as he would have at Duke. I mean, I'm not saying that 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 I'm just saying that when Zion picked Duke, that's what motivated him. That that's what got Cal going. From what Matt Jones has said, that's what he's heard. Also, I've heard that EJ Montgomery, one of Kentucky's five star commits, he's gonna be hopefully a really good player next year. At the McDonald's All American game, I've heard that he didn't like he didn't like the Duke guys, and that's a played a big factor in him not going to Duke and then coming to Kentucky. So and that's just all of this just makes the Kentucky Duke game more interesting. Anyways, I guess uh I've been talking about UK basketball for long enough. I could yeah, I could go uh, on and on. I don't know why we have been. <laughs> because we're one of the two best programs in the country. Anyways. Uh Okay, some of the other things we want to talk about. Uh, this Brian Colangelo story. This is hilarious. I think this made my week. <laughs> this is hilarious. It definitely made my day. I mean, this guy, he's admitted to one of the accounts, the account that hasn't tweeted anything, the Philo 1234567. These are all egg accounts. Yeah, yeah give some background on These it. are all egg accounts. And basically, there's four other accounts that have been tweeting things, negative things about some of the Sixers players. Um, well, Brian Colangelo is the president of... He's uh, basically the basketball decisions maker in the 76ers yeah. organization. He's, he's the top basketball decisions maker. And on an upcoming team, the 76ers should be a force in the East in years to come. They're young. But anyways, this, these four other four accounts, these egg accounts, with none of them more than 150 followers, have been tweeting negative things about... Some of the guys in the Sixers locker room, especially in Joel Embiid, Nerlens Noel, Jaleel Okafor, all these guys have been. Well, Jaleel Okafor deserves some <laughs> criticism. <laughs> but, but these are personal criticisms, not just his players. Anyways, <laughs> these guys, uh, it's been tweeting stuff like classified injury information, um, and uh, it's been tweeting uh, just. You know, it's been tweeting at 76ers, Philadelphia um, newspapers and, and that kind of stuff, defending Colangelo, and I just think this is hilarious. So people are trying to figure it out, if it's, if it's Colangelo himself running these accounts, if it's his son, because, or now we're pretty sure it's his wife, because these accounts follow a bunch of 76ers news outlets, newspapers, it's following... Colangelo's son. It's following uh, Colangelo's teammates and friends at the University of Chicago where he plays basketball. So uh, it seems to me I've, everyone's kind of agreeing today. It's May 31st. Like it's his wife. And <laughs> it's, it's just hilarious I to mean, me that this is happening. At the beginning of the week, you know, no one really believed that, you know, a president of a NBA franchise would do something like this. I mean, I believed it. And as the week went on, you know, it kind of <laughs> started gaining steam, and uh, you know, everyone was kind of like, "Dang, this is actually happening." <laughs> We've but, seen. Now, but now, but uh, now, it's come to my attention that it's probably his wife, and uh, she's <laughs> getting his information from him. So <laughs> that's see, that's what I think too. She can only be getting this information. There's classified injury information 
on, from these accounts. This has to be coming from Colangelo yeah. if it's his wife. Her wife is not, his wife is not getting this information on her own. There's no way that's Basically, possible. Basically, here's what I want to talk about with the Colangelo thing, other than the fact that it's just hilariously funny. You know, I think KD needs to take some <laughs> lessons on burner accounts from Ryan Colangelo because KD's got one and he's kind of obvious about it. He needs to be a little bit more secretive of uh, his identity. <laughs> That's why I believe this story when it came out because we've already seen Ke- Kevin Durant do it. Or did, did Colangelo? Do you think he was inspired a little bit by Durant? <laughs> do we think he's inspired <laughs> by Durant <laughs> and his uh, burner account? Well, I mean, we don't. I'm not sure it was Colangelo. I, I'm I know, sure well, we, can, we know it's some. It's either him or someone closely related to him, or right. So he gives to information him. to. Yeah. So let's say it was his wife. Let's just assume that it was his wife. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's his dog. I mean, it's it's someone that's close to him well, that he's going to get the information to. If it's his wife, do you fire him? I think you got to fire him. Well, yeah. Now, I mean, I think everyone in Philadelphia wants to bring back Sam Hinkie. <laughs> Trust the process. You know, I, I mean, everyone didn't like him when, you know, we're they're tanking and, you know, drafting Embiid and he sat out two years and then Simmons sat out a year. But now it's kind of all come to... <laughs> you know, kind of come full circle. Come to fruition. Yeah, and uh, thanks. I was trying to think of that word there. Yeah, and gotcha. uh, and now they've kind of mm-hmm. everyone kind of sees what Sam Hinkie's vision w- was, and I think everyone now kind of wants him back. And I, I, if I was in the Sixers organization, I would be totally open to bringing him back. Well, I gotta tell you, I would not want Colangelo there anymore. No, I, with what? Because you know he's saying negative things about these players. He's like not Embiid. great. He's not a great president either. You know that's coming from Colangelo. I mean, so I, I just think you gotta fire him. I think the other interesting aspect to this is, does LeBron look at this? Because people have, have you know said that maybe LeBron, this is, Philadelphia is a potential landing spot for him this summer. Does LeBron look at this and go, well, this is trouble. This is maybe a dysfunctional organization. Maybe I don't go there. You know, because I think Sixers fans would go off on Colangelo. You know, I, the whole LeBron situation, it's kind of too early to tell, but I I don't see LeBron leaving Cleveland right now. Because I, do. I, I don't Why not? There, he has no help there. We just talked about how they, they have I no think, shot to be I think he could be, I think Cleveland could be a free agent destination because he's, just because of him being there. And, you know, people know that he literally carried the entire they team. They don't have cap space. He carried the entire team on his back to get to the finals. And so if he could add a, a piece like Paul George or something like that. But the, how, are they, how are they going to do that without cap space? Well, I mean, they've made like five trades at the deadline, so I'm sure they could work something out. Okay, well, you know, the other thing I see with LeBron, maybe he goes to L.A. and starts kind of a new chapter in his life as a businessman. Sets himself up for after. I don't see him going to Philly. That's that's totally out of picture for me. All right. Anyways, I'm not a LeBron expert. Uh, you want to talk a little bit more basketball? Let's talk about the NBA draft a little bit, specifically the point guards. There seems to be a consensus top four point guards. This guy from overseas, Luka Doncic, which I don't know much about, but from listening, I'm a Bill Simmons fan. From listening to him, he sounds great. I mean, I, I heard he, that he he won an award for the best basketball player in the world outside of the NBA, and he's like 17, 18 years old. I mean, this guy, he's got to be great. So then him, you've got Colin Sexton from Alabama, you got Trey Young from, from you Oklahoma, know, and Shade Gilgis-Alexander from uh, your Kentucky Wildcats. You know, if in this draft, I think above, I think anyone would take eight number one. I I think you have to take a number one. He's a man among one boys. or two. He is he is a man. He seems and he's got an NBA ready body. He can play defense in the NBA. Anyway, I, I think you can make a strong argument for Doncic, uh, Luka Doncic. Not really sure how to pronounce his name, but I think you can make a strong argument for him being one you know, as well. I don't. I don't know if I would invest a top three pick in this guy. I don't know much about him. <laughs> well, and, these teams do. He's gonna work out. Well, these teams. if you look at the, honestly, if you look at the history, these guys coming from uh, coming from these foreign countries, like coming from Europe. I mean, how many of them have actually panned out? Some of them have panned out. I think it's worth a shot, seemingly, with this guy. I mean, Nowitzki panned out. Porzingis panned well, out. Dirk Randy was 20 Ginobili. years ago. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Just from, from what people are saying, it seems like it's worth a shot from this guy. But anyway, I mean, here's like, what, here's like what Darko, I'm asking. Darko was a bust. Bogut was a bust. Bogut, Bogut played in college, though. Bogut went to Utah. Yeah, but he is a for, he is foreign, though. Well, we can't just talk about these guys being... Being foreign, 
Um, I mean, it's, it's about whether they played in an overseas league or like, college or not. The guys who specifically play in an over, overseas league and, like, originate from playing in Europe, I, there's not great – It does, history doesn't back them up. You know, I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm not Chris, sure it is, it's as bad as some people say. You know, but, I mean, Christoph Porzingis is obviously great, you know, but he's, like, seven feet tall. You know, he can do everything. But, uh, you know, I just don't know if I would invest the top three pick in this guy. I yeah, think there's I, other I great. Disagree. I I think there's other. I think there could be better players in this draft. Anyways, so here's what I want to ask you. We just talked about those four top point guards. If you if you're an NBA general manager, rank me those four guys where you would take them in the draft. Rank them, not based on need, just based on best player available. Well, what four are you talking about? Are you talking about? I'm talking about Doncic, Sexton, Young, and Gilgis Alexander. Well, I think Doncic would be the number one, obviously. <laughs> Even then, though you just ragged on him. You know, I did. I, but I wouldn't invest the top three pick in him. But I would make... Yeah, did, you just said you wouldn't. Yeah, I, I just that's what I said. I said I wouldn't invest the top three pick in him, but I would maybe draft him in the top ten. Oh, I thought you said draft him in the top three. My bad. But uh, he would be definitely number one. And then uh, Colin Sexton, number two. And then, okay. you know, I know Trey Young is really hyped on. You know, I, I would probably put a number three and then Alexander number four. I I, I, I would take a chance on Trey Young. I almost agree on your list. I can see what you're saying. Steph Curry was drafted seven. And, you know, that might have been a little high for him at the time as well. And he turned into, you know, an you MVP. Know, everybody immediately compares Trey Young to Steph Curry. I, I, I don't but know. But that's, that's his, I think that's his ceiling. But he's a, he's very bold on it. He has to find a way to get shots right. without... Uh, having the ball in his hands all the time. Right. So, I would rank them Doncic 1, Colin Sexton 2. I think Colin Sexton, I think he's going to be really good. I mean, he's fast. He's got, he's he's like, I don't, I don't know if he's John Wall fast, but he's got speed. He can handle the ball. He uh, calves, calves, calves down 6 right now at the start of the 4th, pretty much like we expected. Yeah, uh, LeBron thirty six points. He's probably gonna get fifty, but they're they're gonna lose. Anyways, I think Sexton he can shoot. He's really good. I'm after I'm gonna you know watch them play in the SEC, especially in the tournament. I think he's gonna be really good. I, I it's tough for me to decide between Alexander and Young three and four. I would say Alexander probably three. No. Although I have questions, you know, because his game seems to be in college. It was beating guys off the dribble. I'm not sure. With the bigger, stronger, athletic guys in the NBA, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to beat guys like that, like he did in college. But I think Trey Young has huge bust potential. Yeah. Trey Young has a bigger. He has uh, Jimmer for debt bust potential. He could yeah, be playing in China he, in three his, years. His his rock bottom is so is so much deeper, but his ceiling is so much higher. That's true. So I can totally see the argument. Alexander is, is he's a safer pick, but if you're trying to get. He can play defense too, Alexander can. If you're trying to get value, if you're trying to, you know, uh, get find a diamond in the rough, this is definitely you got to pick Trey Young. You know, I I, I kind of want to agree with you. I'm I'm not sure either way, three or four. But there may uh, be a little bias because you know he went to he went to Kentucky. There's there's a little there's, bias there. There's a little bit of bias, but uh, so you want to go on? Let's go on to the best sport ever created, America's pastime, baseball. Major League Baseball, let's talk a little MLB. Uh, there's voice crack number one. We set the, the we set the over under of voice cracks at two and a half before this this podcast. So uh, there there might be another one or two coming. I apologize for that, but uh, you won't hear it much from me anymore. <laughs> time to time, it'll, he, it'll he's, squeak. He's been a little bit luckier than me, but uh, so let's talk about the opener. That's the idea of. You know, the Rays started it. They didn't start the idea, but they're the first ones to do it this year in the MLB. Uh, to start a reliever for the first inning, maybe two innings, usually just one inning, based on matchups, and then bring your starter in after that reliever in the second inning. What do you, what do you think about this? Because I'm, you know, I'm in, I love this you know, idea. I, at first, I was, you know, kind of, it, it confused me really bad. You know, like, I don't know. It's kind of grown me a little bit. I, I'm kind of in the middle. I've been talking to you. What? It's because I've been talking to you about it. You yeah, realized but, your argument was stupid. But, like, I, it's just, it's so out of the ordinary to start a reliever 
Yes. The first, it's a starter in the first inning, and you only use them for one inning. I think if you're going to start them... You usually only use relievers for one inning. These guys are usually only getting used for one inning. But I think, but I don't think you should be using it. But if you use them for one inning, you got to bring in your starter right after right. that. Get you some innings. But I, I would never, ever use... I would never start a reliever wow. over my number one, two, or maybe three starting pitcher. You know, I, 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 you can make the argument for, I would definitely do it for a four or five, but with your Max Scherzers and... Maybe that's different. I, I still kind of am in favor of it. Let's say you're facing a team, you got, you know, let's, let's use Max Scherzer, he's a right-handed pitcher. You're facing a team, three of their first four guys are lefties. Maybe their first three guys are lefties. Maybe we should throw, they, you know, they hit a lot better against right-handers. have three lefties? I don't know, but it's a possibility. So... So let's say we can start the Nationals' best left-handed reliever out of the bullpen. Maybe their their first or second, one of their left-handed relievers, one of their better left-handed relievers. Start him for the, yeah, Sean Doolittle, I think, maybe pitches for them. Anyways, but start him for the first inning and then bring in Scherzer. I, I love that idea. Just I, Because here's here's why I love that idea. I think you need to use your best pitchers, um, and this, this would be, Based on matchups, I think maybe you want to throw a lefty reliever, maybe even over Max Scherzer. It's different with an ace, but you throw your your best pitcher, which usually is going to be a reliever, especially based on matchups, righty lefty, and high leverage situations. And people don't think of the first thing as a high leverage situation. People think of the no, eighth and ninth. Uh, it is I, a high I leverage disagree situation. There because this is where we disagree. Because if you in the eighth or ninth inning, you want your best pitcher because there's going to be runners on first or second. Why? You already Based use, on what? If you already use your best or second best reliever, I mean you're you're settling for your third or fourth best reliever I'm fine in, in the highest leverage situation. In Possibly, my opinion, in but the end. it's you know you're using him in a high leverage situation if you start him in first because just look at the numbers. There's way more runs scored in the first inning than any other inning. That's a well, high leverage happens, situation. What, what happens if it's in the eighth or ninth inning and it's you know one through three hitters up? Well, that's even a higher leverage situation. If, if it's close, there's a you know it's zero zero. It's close in the first. You know maybe it's not close by then. I, I you know I really like this idea. I think you live yeah, with it. I think you live with not having your the guy you throw early. Yeah, I, later if I was a manager, I would use it, but I wouldn't use it as much as you would. I would. I would be all over it. I'm a big fan. One more thing I want to talk I'll, about. One more point. I would only use it if it was like very, very clear. Like if you had three left-handed batters starting the game, then yes, you want to start a left-handed pitcher. Okay. But if it's like a mix, then like I don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference. Okay, I I can kind of see that we're not as far apart as we were, you know, five minutes before we started this podcast. We're having an argument about it. <sighs> but anyways, uh. Well, let's just we got we have one more sports topic, but I say we we skip that. We're already at thirty three minutes. We we were gonna try and go for twenty five to thirty. It, it ends up being a little bit longer than we thought. So let's, we got one goofy thing. It's not you know totally goofy. It's a little bit goofy. We, we told you we didn't want to talk all sports. We want to make it interesting a little bit. Uh, so you know a couple weeks ago you were showing me this thing. Uh, <laughs> you were showing me this thing. That a guy, you know, he threw out the first pitch in a Marlins game and, like, proposed to his girlfriend. Oh, no, his, his girlfriend threw the first Good pitch. Story. okay. And the guy was a catcher. He caught it and then went up to her and pulled a, a fake baseball out of his back pocket that had the ring in it, and he proposed smooth. to her. Smooth move. It was but, very smooth. <laughs> but, but anyway, I the whole idea, not just the Marlins game, because, you know, we're talking about proposing in front of thousands of people, which... The Marlins game. I mean, let's be honest. There's not that many people there. You know, maybe maybe there were about 200 people at that Marlins game, (laughs) but, um, but just the whole idea of proposing to your girlfriend in front of thousands of people, I I gotta say, you know, awesome or weird. I think it's weird. I'm not a fan. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's it's kind of pressure to to say yes. No doubt. You, you you basically can't say no in that situation. So she got to say yes, even though in her mind she's saying no. You walk out yeah, then later I, after the game. Yeah, she's maybe. like, hey, uh, about that, you know, I, I don't think so. You know, that's <laughs> a little up. taco taco. <laughs> you know, I mean, you don't want you don't want any part of that. Hold up, mister. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is no good. Like, I, I don't like the idea of just pressuring the person to say yes, 
because you're in front of thousands of people, it may be on national television. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a risky situation because you know, highly risky. Because if it works out for you, you know, that's something you can talk about for the rest. of but your But I don't lives. even think it makes a big difference. You know, but I think it would, it would be a memorable. Hey, memorable. but it, what if it wasn't in front of thousands? You know, of there's people a big well. difference from just doing it between you two, maybe a few of your friends and family, compared to doing it at a you know a baseball game with. Thousands of people, but yet again, you know, maybe a few hundred at a Marlins game. They're they're really <laughs> I mean, bad. If you want to propose in front of thousands of people, I mean, you guys got yeah, to do it at a Yankees game. Do it at like Yankee Stadium or Fenway. <laughs> I mean, or come something. on, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't have done better than than Marlins Park in Miami. Dude. I mean, at least you could have done at Great America. I mean, Half that's... the people at that game were probably asleep. <laughs> I mean, probably there to see the other team. There were probably more fans of the other team there than the Marlins. Anyways. Uh, I mean, I'm just not a huge fan of it. I don't think there is a big difference when you're talking about memories. <laughs> if you're doing it in front of, you know, nobody or just your friends and family, then thousands of people, I think it's going to be memorable either way. You know, it's just going to be something people talk about for... Yeah, but I, 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 you might be right about that. But, but I, 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 you know, if you're really, really for sure about it, then... Maybe, but you yeah, know, I'm still against it. If you if you know me, I would definitely choose the. Uh, yeah, no way, Jose. <laughs> choose the uh, maybe a couple people there, and that's it. Yeah, I'm overall I'm against the proposing in front of thousands of people. Yeah. So, anyways, it's been fun. You know, that's uh, the first Hutch and Huber podcast, the inaugural episode. It's in the books. We've done one. We're gonna be ready. We're we're going for for two. Uh, you know, coming up soon, we're going to try and get one about once every week, ten day, and maybe every 10 days. We're going to try and do as much as we can this summer. Uh, we're less busy without school. Uh, so, I mean, and, uh, we're ready. By Let's the way, it. if you don't already, go follow us on Twitter at Hutch and Huber. At Hutch and Huber. Uh, send us any questions, comments about the show, comment, about the website. Comment on this video if you have any questions or comments, and then uh, DM us on Twitter if you... Or if you maybe have any ideas for the show, or you, yeah, know, we'd you love just want to send in your feedback, we'd love that. We'd and love tell to hear your from friends. you guys. Yeah, tell everybody. Let's grow the podcast. Also, check out check out the website. We're both going to try and put each of us one article up, maybe a week is going to be our goal. I just posted one about uh, Pedro Martinez. Which season was better, nineteen ninety nine or two thousand? Maybe we'll talk about that in a, on a podcast uh, soon, a later podcast. Um, so yeah, let's go. Episode one of the books. Check it out.